Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Shaw Wild, and I am an artist and a yogi. We are in Thailand. Can you hear the beautiful morning birds? I've actually just woken up, and I'm going to do yoga and some meditation. Look at how beautiful. It's so pretty. If you were in my live stream yesterday, we were talking about feet and ways to warm up the feet. So if it's the first stretch of your day, like if this is the beginning of your day, focus on the feet first. Just laying through the toes. Stretching the skin on the bottom of the feet. When I wake up my body in the morning, the first stretches I do, there's not always a plan. It's more just intuitive. Like I get on the floor and I start moving around and just anywhere that feels good. I usually start with the feet. Because the feet are the foundation. If my feet feel tight, then my whole body will feel discomfort rippling up from the floor. And this pose is also warming up the wrists and the knees. Good morning, hello. Rocking forward and back. Rocking is very soothing. Very primal. Very good for gently waking up. I'm going to do the hips up and down now. This is the waking up hips, shoulders. Can involve the neck. And you start to do a pattern. So up on the toes, up with the hips, down with the hips up on the toes. And now we're combining the first move that we did with the second move. That's how we start to build the yoga sequences. One builds into the next. And as you build, the poses expand through the body Oh, here's one. Hips slide back to the wrists. That starts to get the core. Also shoulders. And the further back the hips go, the more we'll get into the leg, the backs of the legs, like the hamstrings. Slide back. Oh, 
<laughs> Hips up. Rock on the toes. Heels down. Hips up. Head back. Chin in. Hips down and back. Pull the toes too. Slide forward. Hips up. Hips down. Up on the toes. And now we have the third thing. In this warm up. Now we bring in the breath. Inhale as the toes bend. Exhale as the heels come back down. Inhale as the hips go up. Exhale as they come down and back. Inhale as they go back up. Exhale as they come back down. Inhale as the heels go up. So with the breathing pattern, usually we inhale on up, exhale on down. Inhale, lift the heels up. Exhale, put the heels down. Inhale, hips up. Exhale, hips down and back. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Last one, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down and back, inhale up, exhale down. And now we move on to the next sequence because now the wrists need a break. So whatever was just getting worked in that sequence, now it gets to have a break and a different part of the body will start to be worked. So the wrists need a break, the feet need a break, shoulders need a break, or these parts, they can still work, but they need to work in a new direction. So I'm gonna make circles with my wrists and I'm gonna come say hi to you guys. Closer up for a moment. Hello, good morning. Who's here? Hi, Ronald. Hi, Jerry. Hello. Okay. Hi, GS. I'm saying you don't know if you can do the poses that we're doing. That's okay. Do whatever you can. Don't push yourself to do something you aren't comfortable doing. Making wrist circles. both directions, and then making a fist, taking the free hand, sliding the skin down so it's tight, and then bending the wrist. This is an amazing wrist release stretch. I feel it all here. You can feel it if you go like that but then it's actually intensified by the pulling of the skin down by this other hand. Very nice after you do an intense pose this way to counter this way. And I've got my watchy thing on. So bend it after pulling the skin down. Now I think it's time for shoulder circles. So. Good morning, everybody joining. 
I'm gonna sit on my toes again. I really enjoy doing that. It's such a, if I'm gonna be sitting, I might as well be stretching. So I'm gonna just sit on my toes. If it's uncomfortable for the knees, you just put padding underneath them. And then we play with the shoulders. So you can do small movements first and then we'll grow them bigger. And I'm gonna demonstrate it from the side. Shoulders come forward, up, back, and down. They're coming, like they're trying to touch each other in the front. And they lift up towards the ears. Then the shoulder blades try and touch each other. And they slide down. So we're doing circles. Just the shoulders and the arms dangle. Oh, and the toes are on fire right away. Like I said, if you have a beautiful day with your body, I recommend starting with your feet. So the more creative ways we find to integrate the feet throughout the practice, the better. I'm talking about shoulders, but the feet are still involved. Go forward, back, up, down. down and exaggerate it so as the shoulders open the chest pops forward and you've got a back bend happening and as they come forward stretch the skin tight on the back and tuck your chin in so now you're starting to do like a cat cow open close oh and I need to rest the toes because that's intense to hold it that long <laughs> With the breath, inhale, open up. Exhale, close. Rocking, you can have your hands stay on your knees if you want and then you can actually bend the elbows and then push into the legs. Inhale, draw yourself forward. Exhale, push back. Involve the head. Inhale, forward, open your throat. Exhale, tuck your chin. All of this originating in shoulder movement. Shoulders pull back, the whole body flows forward. Shoulders come forward and the whole body flows back and just move the shoulder back and everything pops forward. Move the shoulder forward, everything flows back. You can involve the arms like wings, open, close. If you want, wrap all the way around and then spread all the way open. with the body rock, that's interesting. Just use the wings and the body rock. Well, now the ankles are getting stretched and the knees, just by sitting in this pose, it's called saddle. It's very intense, so be careful. This is a saddle pose, stretching the ankles and the knees. The body rocks forward as the wings open up. Close. Let's see what happens when the arms go up. Up, and the hands drop back behind the head. So now we're gonna be stretching the triceps, the um, intercostal muscles are getting opened in between the ribs, the armpit, the chest. And then hands come forward, keep the hands together, and down. And this is now getting a nice stretch in the upper back. Inhale. Mm. 
pause. Do you feel the heat in the shoulder? I feel a lot of heat in my shoulder now. So here's your little bounce. We're using a lot of control to direct the shoulders around. So now you just let them be wiggly. And we do some big circles forward. Faster speed is nice. Once you start to warm up, you can go a little faster. And when you go faster, you're bringing in more energy. It's a little bit more excited, more fun, more enthusiasm for movement. Oh, it's like you're doing some swimming stroke. Elbows back, elbows back. And if fast doesn't feel comfortable to you, if it's rushing you, slow down. It's fine. And if those big circles are too big, then just little ones. Look, look how it can ripple. A lot of time I see this in the gym, you know, people are just kind of going like this. See, see if you can actually train the sensitivity in your arms so you're not just throwing these limbs in circles, but you're actually feeling the wave of movement. It's soft, like the wings of a bird. Wing, birds aren't like crazy flapping. If you look at them, they have this beautiful lift at the elbow all the way down the hands, and it starts to become more like a dance. It's very balletic. And then it's involving the whole body here. You'll feel it. It's the slower you go, you'll feel the whole body interacting. So if you lift up the elbows, you're going to feel it in the shoulder blades behind. And when they come down, you're drawing the shoulder blades together. Here, check this out. Look at my back here and see if you can see the muscle engaging as I play with the wings. So arms down, arms up. For this kind of thing, it's really helpful when my muscles are really strongly de defined. I've been traveling a lot in the last six months and I haven't been regularly lifting at the gym. So my muscles are softer, my skin is softer, and I'm a little bit squishier. So I actually don't know what the, I don't know if you can see the definition. But I know that when I'm, when I'm a lot leaner, I love teaching yoga when I'm very lean, because then I can actually show you, just the muscle definition will show you. So I don't know if you could see that, but like what we want to see is when I, you want to see, the, this is the scapula, it's a shoulder, big shoulder bone. It's a shoulder blade. You can see those moving, but then can you see the definition? And if you can't, it's okay. Maybe you can see it on yourself, but when the elbows come down, I'm imagining there's a pencil. I'm trying to squeeze the pencil between my shoulder blades if you try and touch your elbows together. So that's exaggerated. So then when I'm playing with shoulder circles and the wings, it, it's not to that extreme but it's still engaging. So the extreme would be to engage like that. <laughs> and then we're tapping into that muscle very subtly as we have the wings flap. So the elbows come up and then they engage. So movement is originating in the shoulder, but it ripples down through the elbow, all the way to the wrists and the fingers. So it goes, up, up, even the fingers. Like, think of the way that if you're floating on water or the wind, whatever it is, like a feather or a piece of fabric, like if it's, if it's laying on the water and there's a flow, it lifts, right? Even if it's a plank of wood floating on the water, it's still going to move fluidly. So <clears throat> I know you guys like to talk about chakras and when we're practicing movement, we can think about chakras and specifically if we think about the different elements. So each chakra is connected to a different element. Another way to say that is 
in your body, the different elements are very present. So the element of earth is the fact that you've got like flesh and it's solid to, to an extent. There's bone. You're not like a liquid puddling out. There's some structure in you. And there's also fire in you, electrical pulses going off everywhere through your nervous system. Digestive fire, acid is in there. Um, you've got the element of air as you're breathing, and you've got lungs, a whole circulatory system transporting oxygen and other molecules through your body. And then we've got this fluid, this element of water, which we really can play with in the joints. So joint movement. When you put your arm out to the side, if you were no water, if you had no water, water element in your body, you were just earth, this would be solid. If you were just air, this would be turned into gas. <laughs> so you have a solid arm and water can roll through it. Like there can be movement in your body just as though you were floating in water. And the beautiful thing about water is that it flows and it adapts. It's very playful, it's very powerful. And at the same time, it's very soft. It's, it's very cool when you start to feel the water inside your own body sloshing around and being able to move because this is where you start to find flow. You wanna move like water. Can you see in my body? It's like I'm floating on the surface of water and the more sensitive you become to it, the more the whole body starts to engage. So down in the chest, it starts to lift. Like the body isn't stiff and it's just the arms. I mean, it can be, but then the rest of the body naturally wants to come along. So it starts to get pulled, torso, the hips start to move. And what I'm doing right now is very sensual. I'm using my senses. I'm feeling the sensations. And my shoulders are getting absolutely exhausted. <laughs> so I'm gonna rest them. <laughs> so if you want a really good workout, you can have a good workout also be very sensual. Sensual movement, living in flow, incorporating awareness of the chakra system and the elements in the body. If your typical approach is just like up, down, up, down, up, down, see if you can do the same movement so somebody else might not even notice what you're doing, but in your own body, you're feeling water and lifting up and down. So flowing up, flowing down, keep the wrist straight. But the, the movement that's happening here is in your joint. Like if you're doing a bicep curl, it's in this elbow joint and the contraction. Of... So you're, you're trying to bring in smooth water. If you drop the weight, you know, you can actually play a little bit more with the element of flow, like use the wrist, but we're still doing bicep curl motion. I'm just improvising this, so I'm like, how would I do this? This would be like a really nice warm up before you pick up your weights to lift, bring in water. I'm hypermobile, so I can go very far in the elbow bend, but like rolling it back up, unrolling all the way down. So the fingers pull back. You can use the floor to help you if you want. Like the, the water wave rolling, hitting the floor, splashing, and then coming back. It kind of like, looks like a fern unrolling. And you think a fern is a plant, you know, like a little sword fern. Rolling. This is a bicep curl warm up <laughs> with the element of water. Flow. If you have a plant and it has no water in it, if this were a fern, 
or any other plant and it had no water in it, what would happen? It would be dead. <laughs> and it would be brittle. Right? It's the same with the human body. If you got rid of all the water in me right now, I'd just be like a little pancake. So the water, I'm like a big water balloon. And the fern is too. And when, when we have all this water in us, we're like a big jelly, jello bag. Like I can move like the water. Woo! -hoo. And... When we get older, we get more brittle. Our tissue gets more brittle. So doing movements like this, you're engaging this feeling of water, a rippling feeling of water in the limb. You're lubricating your joints. Not just physically, like you're, li you're literally bringing more liquid into these joints very healthy physically and you're also energetically bringing this quality of water so you think about if you were to not have water in your body or you to be very old and stiff or injured you can't do this right because your body's so like I can't even move my arm it's just stuck <laughs> so to keep the feeling of youth and vitality we need to be supple and we need this water. My left arm is having a harder time finding water than the right arm. And you're being like a snake. Curl up and there we go. There's the little fern. Undo it, roll it back. I'm very curious to hear if any of you guys actually try this. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Slow it down. Oh, it's a very nice wrist warm up. And then focus right here on the joint. Bending and lifting. This is a movement. It's like a wave coming down the elbow. And then a little riffle. And then a wave rushes back up. <laughs> See if I can do it with both. And down and unfurl and roll back and curl. Unfurl and curl. I'm just making all this stuff up. Shake it. I really enjoy teaching live streams because I come up with all sorts of new random things. I have a little audience and I just start experimenting. All right, what are you guys saying? And also, if you're doing this with me, do you feel a change in your body? Because we've been gently warming up for 30 minutes at the beginning of the day. Ronald is asking about infrared therapy. I've done it before. I've laid in an infrared bed every day for 30 minutes during the winter time. Um, I did that a couple of years ago in like COVID time. I liked it. I don't know if it did anything to my body, but it did definitely helped my mind. I would listen to Abraham Hicks while laying in a uh, infrared sunbed every single day for at least 30 minutes. <laughs> GS, you're saying that in jujitsu you say be like water. So you totally understand what I'm talking about. Water is 100% adaptable to match the shape of whatever element, environment you put it in. Exactly. Hi, Sergio and True from Costa Rica and Michael and Bruno. Exactly. So when it comes to these um, movements of our body, whether it's jujitsu or yoga, you've got, we all have the same body, basically. And they all kind of work in the same way. <laughs> so it's nice to have something like an element to turn to, because then you can, you can 
play with the element in your own way. Like, if we all have arms, most of us have arms, and most of our arms work the same way, and we all have water, we're all drinking water, we've all watched water, it's like, okay, we have these things in common, and then, once you understand how to feel the water in your body, moving like water, and then you start to have playfulness. And water is very playful, so now you get to make it your own. Like You get to choose how will you play with water, how will you move like water today. And then you practice it in your stretching, in your jujitsu, in your yoga, chunk of your day that like 30 minutes or that hour that you set aside time to just play with your body excuse me you're training it so that it actually will start to bleed into the rest of the day and you'll find yourself in other places the kitchen the grocery store the office the car walking running at the park you'll be in other situations even going to sleep or in the shower and you'll start to notice that your body is moving differently Maybe it's repeating a movement that you did it during your practice. Like maybe when you're in the kitchen, you'll suddenly start to like loosen up your arms and you'll be like, what am I doing? And you're like, oh yeah, this is this thing I did in yoga this morning. So we practice so that it becomes the way that we play. We practice on the mat so it's the way that we end up playing in life. We practice a certain posture on the mat so that that posture becomes our default as we walk around. We practice moving like water so that as we move around through the rest of the day, we actually move like water. So instead of walking around stressed and rushed and tight, we walk around smoothly and the body is relaxed. And this actually feeds into the mindset and the spirit. So now you're walking through the world fluidly, calmly, powerfully, adapting to every situation and environment. So your emotions, your mind, your spirit, your body, all of it starts to be like water. And this is how these practices on the mat flow all the way through your life, touching every single part of your life. And it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes your spiritual practice, your mental health practice, all of it. Let's do the sequence that we started with and see how it feels now that I've had a little break. Inhale, lift the heels. Body's warmer. I'm sweatier now, so the body's going to start to um, flow better. It's like ice. It's cold when the body's cold in the morning. We're like more like a solid, like ice. And then as we start to do these movements, we become more like liquid and we flow. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, heels, hips up. Exhale, down and back. This feels a lot easier. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. I'm going to incorporate my legs now. It's really getting into the hip flexor. And the bottom foot's going to come up now. is getting the core. Ooh. 
That feels amazing. Let's go this way. It's sweaty, hot and humid here at 8 a.m. or sometime, I don't know. I don't know what time it is. That was a flow. The flow gets that water, it, gets, it builds the heat in the body. So the fire starts to co come in. And now I'm leaning forward over my legs to stretch the backside of the body and be still for a moment. So many bugs on the floor. I'm always doing so much <laughs> time on the floor with bugs. All right, so I was talking about the elements. And now that we've done a little flow, I can explain how the element of fire and air come into this. So you sit down and you're in your body, you're in your physical body. This is earth. Earth is here. <laughs> I have a physical form. I've got some matter. And I start to bring in the water, moving the matter around. When you've got matter and movement, now we've got energy. And as the energy flows, we start to build heat. We start to feel an internal fire. And as the internal fire grows, it starts to demand air and our breath. Starts to pump to fuel that fire. And so now you have earth and water and fire. It's like you literally start sweating and feeling heat build and your, your lungs start to take in more air. And now you've got all these elements up until the chest. So the earthy element, as I said, we start with the feet because the earth element is the root chakra. And the root chakra is the pelvis, like pelvic floor, hips, it's all of this lower body all the way down to the feet. So we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is start to stretch the feet, tapping into the earth. Earth, we're grounded. We've just been in sleep. We've just been in a dream state. We've just been out in like la la land and you open your eyes and you're like, where am I? Oh yes, I'm on earth. Touch the earth. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel the legs. Massage your legs, massage your feet. And you're like, okay, I'm here, grounded. Now that I'm here, now I can move. So then we bring in the movement. We bring in the water. And you're like, okay, yeah, I'm in this world and now I get to move through this world and I'm gonna move through this world like water, smooth and adapting to all situations. And now that I'm moving through this world, I'm starting to build up a sweat <laughs> because it's taking energy to move in this world. And I'm starting to feel hot inside and I'm starting to breathe bigger. So the water, the water element is the sacral chakra and it comes in in this lower belly, low back area. And you'll see that's the first thing I do. Once I'm in my body, once I'm in the earth, I start to, to wiggle. And it's like the pelvis is a bowl, a bowl full of water. And that water gets everything jiggling. And then you start to have the fire build in the core, like a digestive fire. You're starting to use energy to move your body. Your body has to break down the food that you've eaten to get the calories, to get the food, to get the energy. There's fire happening here. Fire transforms. You've eaten food, it's transforming it into energy that you can use. You apply that energy and you start to transform your body. And you start to transform your mind. So first you have to flow like water so that you can start tapping into this usage of energy and this transformative fire. 
and then you come up into your chest, respiratory system. Inhale, exhale. This is the billows pumping the fire. And what happens once you have all of these elements together now, working from bottom to top? You get up into the throat, the mind space up here. Well, the mind infiltrates the entire body, so it's more specifically the third eye, the brain, your ability to, to see, tapping into intuition, visions, truth. What do you need to speak? What do you need to express? Like now that your whole body is moving and you feel this heat and you've got this air in your lungs, the air is fueling the inner fire and it's also used to express, like push, push the air out of your mouth and you can talk. And if you breath in and hold your breath, now you can listen and hear. So once the body is fully present with all the elements interacting, this is where your consciousness starts to rise. You're not just stuck here in the physical how my body is, this is how I woke up. Like, oh my God, I woke up and I started to change. I started to transform. I started to breathe and take new things in. I started to listen. I started to express. And then you start to go into third eye. This is where you have your imagination, your ideas, you start to see things like, oh, I have great ideas about what I want to create in this world. Now that I have this body to use as a tool in this world, as a vehicle, I can take whatever ideas I've got up here and I can start to manifest them through the body. So you're visualizing up top and then the bottom, the root chakra, is whatever has manifested, whatever has become real in the physical world. So it's real in your mind, and then you bring it down through the chakras, and that's a different journey. So I've just been, I've been explaining the journey up the chakras. Once you have that upward moment, movement, then you can start to play with bringing it back down. And all of this helps bring you into the present moment. And when you're in the present moment, you get to experience divine oneness. You and this moment and everything else in the universe is all one. And that's blissful. I'm gonna see what your, your comments are saying. And then now that my whole body feels warm and sweaty and all the elements are present, I'm gonna sit in meditation in that blissful, yummy energy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, hello. Hi Brian, hi Christian. Bugs on the floor, yes, hi Jose. Hello, hello. And yes, I've got bugs everywhere. I'm gonna sit up the camera here. Let me see. I wanna meditate in the hot sun because it's gonna be too intense. So I'm gonna move us into a more shady spot. And it's beautiful to sit in meditation after doing a movement warm up like the one that we just did. If you meditate straight away, it's a very different experience. Sometimes I like to meditate straight away because then I get to see what's going on in my mind right from the moment I wake up from sleep. So it's very interesting to see that. What are the first thoughts going on? What's the energy like immediately? Um, but sometimes I like to meditate after I do a warm up a yoga flow because then the yoga flow made the body feel more comfortable to sit in. It's like when you 
sit down to meditate, you're sitting down in a chair. And the chair is your body. So are you comfortable in your body? Is it a comfortable seat to sit in? And if it's not, then that's where we start to love the body, to make it become softer, more flexible, more able to, to hold you. It's like if you have a chair and it's uncomfortable, maybe you throw it away, but if it's the only chair you have, then what can you do to make it more comfortable? Maybe you add more cushion to it. Maybe you adjust the legs a little bit. Like you can change the position of it. Uh, maybe it needs to be reupholstered. So you identify, how can I do something to make this chair more comfortable? And it's the same with the body. How can I do something to make this body a more comfortable place for me to sit in it? Does it need to stretch? Does it need to be stronger? If your back muscles are weak, it's gonna be hard to sit up straight because the back muscles don't have enough strength to engage and pull you up and hold you there. If the hip muscles are tight, that you're gonna be up here and it's not gonna feel good. So for right now, you can put something underneath yourself like a pillow, but you can also work on the stretches to open up the hips. So you identify where is their discomfort and how can I make it better? Purely so that I can sit in my body and enjoy the experience. And when you sit down and meditate, you can meditate sitting, you can lay down, you can sit in a chair, you can even do it walking, just finding a posture and focusing your mind on this posture. At the moment I've been very focused on the tip of my nose. I take my, my eyes are closed but I'm looking at the tip of my nose and for some reason, maybe it's because of the eyelids, but it's kind of the color red. And I, I just pick the very front dot of my nose and that's what I'm gonna stare at. And then I treat my brain as though it's a little puppy dog or as though it's a child who I'm training in a sport or something. Like I'm the coach and I'm training this young energetic creature, whether it's a dog or a child, to sit still, and you know how challenging that can be, right? Like you'd say sit and then the dog runs away. And then you're like, okay, I've got to try this again. <laughs> or the kid, you're trying to teach them something and they keep talking about something else and running away. This is the same as your mind. So the, the, the task that we're taking on, the assignment, the homework assignment, the training is get your mind to focus on the tip of your nose so it doesn't look elsewhere, it just continually focuses, like stares at the tip of the nose. And we're going to breathe. We're going to breathe in through the nose, feel the air coming in through the nose. And when you breathe out, breathe out through the nose, feel the air leaving. And count. As the air leaves your nose. As you exhale, you count. Don't count on the inhale, that's just a natural. Inhale, as we exhale, we think the number one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, Exhale, three. And we go all the way up to 10. So inhales, exhales through the nose. Counting on the exhale. Focusing attention on the tip of the nose and all the sensation that you feel around the nose. When you notice that your mind has wandered and you're thinking about something else, you notice it and you just bring it back. If your mind wanders away 500 times and you bring it back to your nose 500 times, that is a successful meditation. Just like any sport, any training of anything, we're just practicing. Oh, you 
Like if you're doing free throws, trying to get your basket into the, or the ball into the basket, you keep shooting and you keep missing, but you're practicing. So eventually you're gonna get it and you're gonna get it more consistently. So right now you're training your mind, which is wandering away. We're not asking the mind to stop thinking. We're just asking it to think about the tip of the nose and to count. And if it tries to do something else, your it's your friend. You're just hello mind. <laughs> come back. Try again. Focus. Focus. Nope. Focus. Come here. Come here. Come here. Focus here. Does that make sense? So you can join me in that. I'm gonna do this. Your hands can rest on your knees. Your hands can rest on your legs. I like to put my hands on my knees if I wanna feel more grounded, especially if your mind's really busy. Hands on the knees can help you feel very symmetrical. Energy is flowing down into the ground, like you're grounding. You can even touch the earth. And if you're feeling quite stable, already, then resting the hands in the lap, like a cup, one on top of the other. Or you can do fingers together, like this. Then you start to create a circle inside the body, so there's a closed circuit. That's nice too. I forgot to mention when you're counting, you're counting up to 10. And if your mind wanders, before you hit 10, start back at one. So your meditation might look like this. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. In, three. Four. Oh, there's ants everywhere. Oh boy, I wonder if they're gonna crawl on me. Oh, my mind has wandered. Back to one. One. Inhale. Two. Inhale. Three. Inhale. Four. Inhale. I kind of want to go get a coffee. Maybe I should drink coffee. Should I not drink coffee? Maybe I shouldn't drink coffee anymore. Oh, my mind has wandered. Back to one. Inhale. One. Inhale. Two. You see? So you go, you hit 10, it's like you hit the buzzer, bring, hit the number 10, go back to one. A perfect practice would be from the moment we start meditating until the moment you end, your mind has thought of nothing else apart from the nose and counting up to 10. And you'd be able to say, I successfully, smoothly counted up to 10 30 times without interruption. That'd be the perfect. So you can kind of keep track of it. You don't need to, but just so you understand the concept, you're like, I hit 10, 10 times. I attempted it, you know, 40 times. I had 40 starts and 10 finishes. But the numbers, you can eventually let go of them because they don't really matter. It's just giving your nothing to focus on. Okay, and we're beginning it.
your mind wanders, just bring it back. And bring your mind back to your nose. Bring your mind back to your nose. Check your posture. Sit up tall. Meditation. I'm guessing it was like 10 minutes, maybe. <sighs> hey guys. That's the problem with teaching meditation is that my eyes are closed, so I can't tell when the video dies. I don't know at what point the video died. But I just guided you through a beautiful, beautiful, maybe 10 minute meditation and I don't know how much of that was recorded, but it was beautiful. This is amazing work for the quadricep muscles.
I'm discovering where the internet holds up and where it fails. <laughs> um, okay, so Brian, you're saying that you were waiting for this. Um, you mean the meditation? I kind of feel like we've talked about that before a lot. And Christian asks, am I gonna live stream on the regular? Yes, I am. And at the moment it feels really good for me to be waking up and starting the day with yoga, meditation, and a live stream. Yeah, so you guys can send in your, um, like your requests for what you wanna learn or tell me what you've been Experiencing, like what kind of discomfort you're feeling in your body or your mind because then whatever I'm teaching can help cater to that and the birds are so nice, right? Uh, um, so the live stream cut off before when I was teaching the meditation so I'm hoping that you got the instruction on, on the meditation technique and I will, uh, I can teach it again. I'll teach it again and again. So if you missed any of it, just follow along. You can go back and watch this replay. Follow along with it up until the point where the, the video cuts out and then just carry on on your own. And I recommend using a timer. So I meditate with a timer on my phone, just the built-in clock timer. And at the moment I'm going for 20 minutes in my own practice. And then when I just sit there and I count my exhales until the 20 minute timer goes off. So choose, choose a time that's small. If this is new for you, like have a three minute timer. And if that even feels like too much, do a one minute timer. I actually started meditating at one, with a one minute timer and I slowly built up over time. Um, and I've done longer meditations that were like, even sometimes up to an hour or so but when you're starting, especially if you're trying to build a practice, start in an increment that's so small that you know you can do it and you can do it every single day. Can you do one minute of breath meditation every single morning? And if you can, and you've done it consistently for a couple weeks, then you can try two minutes 
and then you can try it three minutes and you just slowly crank it up more and more. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions about the live stream that I just taught here? About the yoga or the meditation? Because now I'm just kind of standing in the garden, <laughs> enjoying the sound of the birds. But I'm here for a couple minutes if you guys want to ask me a question and want anything clarified. Also, would you in the comments please write down what you learned or what was helpful for you? Like, because you watched this live stream, how has your life benefited in some way? Would you share that in the comments for all of us, please? Why was this a good use of your time? just swim right into the leaves. Pyroific. Am I saying that right? Pyroific. You said this was a nice, calm end to a long work day. Yay, I'm glad that you're here. Find the right light. There we go. Michael, how do you stretch your inner thighs? I can totally put that on my list of things to talk about. Lots of ways. Come back tomorrow for another yoga class. Brian, the process of how to focus, rather than just saying to meditate was great. Okay, cool. Like actually explaining like how meditation works, the fact that you're actually training your mind as the, the exact same way you'd be training any skill. Christian, you said that you can take simple action to physically and mentally feel better. That I remind you of the good vibes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thank you guys for taking the time to share that. I really appreciate it. I am going to go and do my own meditation now um, with my 20 minute timer. Then I will get dressed and go to one of the coolest coffee shops ever in Thailand. It's up on top of a mountain where I will write in my journal and enjoy a nice view and a nice morning drink because for me, it's only like, I don't know, eight or nine in the morning or something. I don't know what time it is. Yeah. And then I'm gonna eat delicious Thai food later because it's the best food on the planet. 
Mm. I've been eating red curry. No, 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 I want to have a red curry today. I've been eating green curry, pad thai, papaya salad, and mango shakes. Delicious, ridiculous, so ridiculously delicious. Christian, your name on YouTube makes me laugh. Christian Powers saves the world. <laughs> I love, I love it. I feel like we should all have that as our handles. Shaw Wild saves the world. Brian Evans saves the world. Pyroific saves the world. <gasps> I love it. All right, you guys, it's 75 minutes. Time to go. I will see you tomorrow. And I am doing it in my morning time. I'll check what time I did it. I'm not really sure. But sometime between like 7 and 10 a.m. Thailand time seems to be when I'm live streaming. So stay tuned and maybe I'll get more and more honed in on a certain time. <laughs>